Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about quilting the hen house quilt. And there's a few things that I want to run through. So I have my notes out once again. So if you see me look down, that's what it's all about. So the first thing that I want to remind you of is there is no shame in sending off a quilt to a long arm quilter. In fact, it, it can be a huge relief off of your shoulders, your back, and your mind just because you've picked out a design, you've agreed to it, and somebody else is going to carry out that part. As you can probably guess, because I already use machine applique, I am really a fan of machine quilting. It does a lovely job. However, that being said, if you don't have a long arm quilter that you trust and you want to send it off, but you don't have to know who to send it to, then you've got that got to use some resources there. So the first thing that I would recommend is your local quilt stores. They will probably know people who are long arm quilters and be able to send them or send you in their direction. They probably have a stack of cards for these people. And I know in one place that I was in, the long arm quilter came to the quilt store periodically and would pick up the quilts and deliver them back to the store. So you just put in a check and your quilt and your backing and they carried out the rest of it. It was a fantastic situation and that was back when I lived in Maryland. So I've moved many times since then and but that's how I got my first quilt done. So that's something to consider. Now the other way that you can do it is you can do free motion quilting and this is something that I'm completely familiar with because I do it quite a bit. Free motion quilting is one of those things that requires a lot of practice. And I would say practice in drawing first. I get a whiteboard out and I draw my designs over and over and over and over. And there's something about doing that that takes it from your hand to your brain and it gets you used to thinking about using a continuous motion all through your quilt and that's very handy. So I spend a lot of time drawing and sketching before I actually go to a quilt. This particular quilt that I have here, I've just done a wavy line over and over. That was fine with me and it got the quilt done very quickly and that's one way to do it. Um, it's not fancy, but it holds the quilt together and a lot of quilting is all about the structure. So that's something to consider. So now I'm gonna run through a few things about free motion quilting. So there are some pros to do it yourself and that is you can do it yourself and you can use a domestic machine. But the big con is that it's heavy. So the quilt is heavy, you're pushing the quilt through the machine and you're using your wrists and it's, it's, it puts a lot of strain on your shoulders. So that's one thing that you might wanna consider if you're considering free motion quilting. A lot has to do with the size of the quilt. Your throat space in your machine is not that big. Most of them are about five inches. I think mine is about 10 and it's a lot to put a whole quilt through a machine because you have to continuously roll it up. There's a method to it and it takes some practice. It's heavy to work with um, because of your machine space. The other con to it is on most domestic machines you don't have sti stitch regulation and stitch regulation is that part of what it does is it makes the stitch nice and even. So when you look at, say, the decorative stitches that go down your blue jeans or your blouse or something, they're all exactly the same space away. When you're moving something through a machine, you have dropped the feed dogs and you're pushing the fabric through the machine, but you're not necessarily pushing it at the same speed. And this is a skill. It requires a lot of practice to get to the point where this works well for you. My way of doing this is I do do free motion, but I do it on a homemade quilt frame. I don't have a long arm machine. I would love to have one. I consider this training wheels for when I have the real thing. Hopefully, hopefully I haven't got into any bad habits that will not translate, but I think the free motion part will serve me well. But the cons for me is that I don't have a stitch regulator either. So I have to consistently work both on my strength to move the machine around 
and it, it does weigh something. The inertia is carried by the rails on the frame, but you still have to push the machine, and it still has its own gravity that you have to work against. So it takes a little bit of time to get through that part. Another problem is when you sit at a machine, all the controls are facing you. When I have it set up on a frame, the controls are, they're on my right side. And so the controls are on my right side. So any time that I need to access any kind of control, I have to kind of go over to one side. It's a little bit awkward. And I have to take it, I have to take the whole machine if I need to change a needle, if I break a needle, it's not a great day anyway when that happens. But if I have to change the bobbin thread or the regular thread and rethread my machine, then all of that has to happen when I push it to one side. And I may still be in some awkward positions because every now and then I can't see what I'm doing or something is just not right as I'm sewing and I will find myself straining to one side or the other trying to get a better look at something. So th that can happen also. You're not always optimally where you need to be visually. So if you have a long armor and they have pantographs and they have everything automated, they have, they still have to work on their machines and watch what's going on and kind of finesse the difficulties that your quilt may have, but they don't have quite that problem. But there are a couple of other cons, and one is the machine vibrates, and that vibration for me transfers through the handles. This can cause hand fatigue, and also I have the foot pedal and I'm pressing it as I'm controlling the machine. So I'm pressing it with my thumb and I'm moving the machine with my, well, with both of my hands, but I'm holding on to the handle and I'm pressing with my thumb. So this can, and there's vibration coming back from the machine. So this can all contribute to uh, your hand fatigue and that can play into how long that you're able to quilt. It's very satisfying to do every part of the quilt yourself. And like I said, there's no shame in send, sending it off and having somebody else do it. So this is my quilt set up from the front of the frame. I control my, my foot pedal is sitting right here and I just control it with my thumbs. And I've already got my machine set up how I would like it. So my plan for this is, let me see if I can move this. I've been doing squiggly lines across my quilt because I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. This quilt's already been in there for a while. So you can see the back of it there, how the squiggly lines will go around. And then I'm just stopping to outline, to outline these designs. So I'll just come around the edge and run a, a, a single stitch around that. I'll be working from a seated position and I'll pull the carriage that my machine sits on to the far left hand side. As you can see, I have to watch out and this is so that I won't bump the poles that take up the quilt that I, um, as I progress down the line. One of the things that you can see is that I have a small work area, even with the frame. I'd already went through and basted down the quilt because I, I want to float both ends of the batting and the top, and I didn't want to, them to get in my way while I was quilting. Having both of the ends secure on the frame allows me to trim off the excess batting and work more freely. So I'm working my way across the quilt and I'm making wavy lines. And I'm not trying to make these lines line up with each other on each row. They can be separate and I want them to look random. So one of the other things you'll see is that I'm working sitting down and I'm, so I have my chair on a, I have my chair on a plastic mat and that's so that it can slide across because I have to reposition a whole lot when I'm doing this. And when you reposition, you don't want to make it, you want to make it as seamless as possible.
This is the back of my quilt. Um, I ordered, a, I think, about four yards of these panels that looked like they were meant to be cut into fat quarters. And that has worked very well for the end of this. I just sewed them down the middle. It's not my favorite place to sew, but in this case it worked well. So you can see a little bit of the quilting. I wanted a nice open wavy line as far as my quilting for this. And I just outlined a few of the motifs in the middle of um, each of the designs. One of the things that I did was I also added a sleeve on this end and I just tucked the sleeve under the binding on this side and just whip stitched right down this edge here and that will hold the quilt if I decide to hang it. One of the other things is I was completely out of green fabric and so I started sewing little six inch strips together for my binding. I don't normally bind this way, usually I bind on a diagonal, but I wanted to have on the other side for the six inch strips to have two six, well they were six and a half, but I wanted them to go uh, two across each of these front motifs. So anyway, I was down to the wire on what I needed on this. This quilt has gone on and on because I've had to wait for both fabric as far as the back panels and, and I've also had to wait for batting because I didn't have any here. So this is the front of the hen house quilt. It is, I've got it sitting on my dining room table, so it's not the perfect place for it to sit. But what I was hoping is that a little bit of the quilting would stand out in the light from the dining room, which I think it works. So it was quite a bit of effort. There's 36 blocks on this. So it took some time both to applique the blocks and then to put the rest of the quilt together. I'm very pleased with it. Let me see if I can move it this way a little bit. All the way down. Don't forget to like and subscribe.